turn! Pick on some on your own side! Hey everybody, it's Marshall Monkey here, and if you like stunning visuals, thrilling action sequences, touching character moments, then you're gonna love Star Wars The Last Jedi. But, if you love story-driven momentum, shocking plot twists, and good pacing, then Star Wars The Last Jedi isn't the movie for you. Yes, this is gonna be my Star Wars The Last Jedi movie review. Uh, and so Star Wars The Last Jedi is an action-packed movie with great visuals, and a not-so-good story. So, apparently, a lot of the audiences are agreeing, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Um, but before I do, two things before watching this review. One, there are spoilers in this video, and two, in case you haven't seen the film, it is a good movie, but there are some flaws too big to ignore. So first, what's good about Star Wars The Last Jedi? Well, the movie is a beautiful film. I mean, these are some of the best visuals I've seen in a recent Disney film. I mean, the Marvel Disney films, you know, they look good, but a lot of the colors and the visual effects seem a little juvenile compared to Star Wars effects because they seem to have an elegance to them, uh, which is just really great. Um, but it also, you know, the thing that I really like about the movie is that the action sequences are just so good. From the space battles, right? Uh, and then also from the lightsaber battles, and particularly one uh, specifically, which is the one where uh, Rey and uh, Kylo Ren are uh, fighting against the guard, right? Uh, against Snoke's guard. Right? It was just really good. Uh, it was spectacular, actually. The movie does really well with its characters. One of my favorite characters in the movie was Rose. I thought she was really nice. Uh, and I really do like the character moments. Like, specifically, like, some between, like, Ray and uh, Luke, right? That was just really great. Um, and I really do like, you know, things that happen between, again, Finn and Rose. I mean, Rose is just so good. And, and it's really compatible, the actress was, with... Uh, uh, with Finn, right? With John Boyega. Oh, it was so good. Right, and they both, and everyone gives a pretty good performance. Um, the thing is, the performance wasn't my problem, just the overall writing and the kind of reason why the character was there, which we'll talk about in a second. But let's talk about the villain performances with General uh, Tusk, right? General Husk? I can't remember his name. I think it was Tusk. And Snoke? Oh, they were spectacular. I loved them both. Um, Snoke... I didn't love so much, uh, for one reason, not because of the character or the uh, performance, but what happened to him. We'll talk about that too. Um, but the performances from Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, Daisy Ridley, Oscar Isaac, and most importantly, Adam frickin' Driver, uh, were really, really good. To me, Adam Driver seemed to have a nuance to him in this performance that reminds me a lot of Alan Rickman, and that's incredible, right? I mean, you can't really get better than that. Uh, and I really do feel like, to be honest, Adam Driver is Alan Rickman. I mean, he has the same hairstyle, the same wardrobe choices, right? Black is chic. Um, it's just, he is Alan Rickman at this point. He's the Star Wars Alan Rickman, and I'm not complaining about it, right? And what about the bad of the movie? Well, there's some bad things here. The pacing in this movie is just freaking off. I mean, there is really bad pacing here. I mean, it's just so unfortunate. Um, I also don't like a lot of the character motives, so to be honest, the Admiral, I don't even remember her name, she wasn't even that important to me. I think that the idea of self-sacrifice in this movie with a lot of the characters was great, especially with the Admiral. That was a touching character moment. But what I didn't like is that her whole idea of planning was just off, right? I mean, what the heck was she doing when she took over for Leia? And we'll talk about Leia in a second, because there's some things we just got to talk about with her. But for example, when she was like, okay, I'm taking over the ship now, and here's the thing, I'm not going to tell anyone my plan, and I'm just going to roll with it, right? I was like, what the heck are you doing? And I think Oscar Isaac had a right to know, right? Poe had a right to know what was going on. So I think that was just kind of ridiculous that he didn't get to know what was happening, right? And then especially with the idea of the planet, if that plan was so easy, right? If they were like, okay, we're going to take off in these transport ships and just go down to this hideout, then why didn't she just say it, right? I mean, it was just ridiculous. And also... Was that planet there the entire time? I mean, what was going on with that planet? If it was there the entire time, why didn't the uh, the uh, the form? Why didn't the order know that they were going there? Why didn't the Empire know that? Right? I mean, why waste time trying to stop them if they could have just blocked them from going to that planet? Right? And why didn't Leia come up with that idea to go to the planet earlier? I just thought it was ridiculous. There were so many things that were too confusing, too unexplainable, and I think the only reason why that planet exists is that so they could have another location. Because to be honest, this movie doesn't go anywhere. And that's another thing I don't like about this movie. What the heck? 
the plot is basically the same thing as we, what we've been seeing from a lot of the Star Wars movies, which is nothing gets done, right? There's no kind of, there's no real progress done. I think in Rogue One, that was pretty much the only progress that happened in the movie, was that they were able to get the plans for the Death Star, right? Which led into the actual Star Wars movie starting. Um, but overall, I just thought it was so disappointing that the movie doesn't really go anywhere. Like by the end, there's no actual accomplishment and we'll talk about why that is in a second. But let's talk about Carrie Fisher. Okay, so Carrie Fisher, I really thought they were gonna kill her off, but I guess they're not going to. I don't really think that makes sense. And I think that the death that they would have given her, right, when she was floating out into space, would have been a really good death sequence. I thought that that would have been fantastic. It would have been a good ending to Carrie Fisher's uh, career here, like in the Star Wars movie, franchise and this would have been her last role because of course uh, she tragically passed and we don't get to see her uh, grace the screen anymore as this character. So I didn't just I just don't understand why they kept her alive and killed off Luke which we'll talk about as well very uh, very briefly. But what am I talking about with uh, what's going on with Star Wars and why it just doesn't make sense? Well it seems like to me they rebooted everything without actually rebooting the Star Wars movies. Snoke's death was very rushed, right? There was no real accomplishment there. I thought the way Kylo Ren handled that was cool, but then again, if Snoke is so powerful to link Rey in Kylo's mind, then why didn't he send the lightsaber? It didn't really make sense. I thought that killing Luke off seemed a little bit too drastic, right? Where they were just like, okay, let's just kill him off. I was like, wait a minute, if he's the like the light of the, the rebellion, they're just gonna kill him off? I just don't think that makes sense. You know, did Mark Hamill not want to come back? I'm really confused, right? So I just think they're rebooting the Star Wars franchise without actually rebooting it. As for why audiences aren't really liking the story of this movie, well, the audience score is severely low on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, how does it feel, Disney? Because a lot of people, a lot of Disney fans are theorizing that Warner Brothers uh, is hitting Rotten Tomatoes, right? And they're because they own part of it, and that they're trying to troll Star Wars by hitting the audience score super low. But, you know, the same thing happened with DC, where DC fans were like, well, we think Marvel fans are trolling us, right? But you can't do that, Disney. You can't turn it on them, right? You can't do that. Because if you're gonna, um, if you're gonna dodge that theory of the Warner Brothers people doing that, well, then you can't, uh, defend yourself from this. It just seems like a little unfair that if they get, uh, theorized that they're the one, you know, that their score is being messed with, I think it's right for them to do that to you. But I think it's just that everyone you know, didn't really like the story behind the movie. But is the movie still good? Heck yes it is. Um, will I see it again? Probably not. I'd probably wait for it to come out officially before I actually see it again just because I don't think it's worth a lot of it because there's so many like sales, you know, there's so many like hard sales going on right now with that. It's hard because like the screenings are basically sold out, right? There's nobody, there's no tickets right now. So I don't think I'd see it right, right, right away. But what did you guys think of Star Wars The Last Jedi? Don't forget to comment down below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. And don't forget to, as always, subscribe. And I will see you guys later for some more videos.